Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd, and you are here for the May 2016 World Docs Virtual User Group Meeting. And today, Mary Jo and I are talking about sending documents out of World Docs to do things to them externally, and getting documents into World Docs, maybe from a CD, maybe from a, a flash drive, maybe from Discovery. Without any further ado, I will press all of the magic buttons, because there are actually several of them, and I will get us out to a World Docs screen where Mary Jo will talk about getting documents out of World Docs. Okay, so we are going to, let me open World Docs here a little bit bigger. So we're going to talk about creating a send to the desktop on how to get documents out to the desktop into a folder for various reasons. Um, we do have the check in, check out feature that we can do um, that you can check out documents and that way nobody else can work on them while you have them checked out. But let's say you just want to send some documents down to the desktop temporarily um, into a folder that you can just get to, whether it's to combine, let's say you have several PDFs you want to combine into one, and that does it much easier outside of World Docs. You want to just send them to a temporary folder so you've got them and can open them and combine them and then resave them back to World Docs. We could do that. Or you just might want them into that folder so you can throw them onto a flash drive, um, do whatever you want to do with them, uh, understanding that they're not officially checked out, but they're just temporarily in this little location. Uh, maybe to attach them, you know, whatever it is, whatever that reason would be. So we're going to talk about actually creating the send to. And I'm just on any list screen. I believe we're probably on Paul's favorites. And if I just right click on any document, I get a menu of options that I can do. And one of them is the send to. And so right here, I have all these different things that are already created here. So I've got one that's copied to my Windows desktop. There's all these built-in send to's of places you can send documents to. Um, in my example, I'm just going to create a folder that I, I just want to send it to a World Docs folder on the desktop. But just know all of these other things, I could just send it directly to the desktop. Now, if I have multiple documents, I may not want to do that because I don't want 10 documents on my desktop. I want to put them inside of a folder so I can get to them. Um, you can copy them to your My Documents. You can copy them uh, to your pictures, anywhere, a, a, a flash drive. You can have them copy out to that, whatever it is that you want to do. But I'm going to modify one in here, my desktop one, because that's a default send to that's already in the program, and just have it go out to a World Box folder. So I'm going to click on Add Edit. And so I right-clicked on any file to get to the send to. I'm going to add edit. I'm going to go over to the public send to's or the my send to's. Either one of these is where I can edit and actually change or add a new uh, send to. If I am on my all, I can't really do anything here. If I try to add or modify this, all I can do is block it or allow it. But I'm going to go over to the, the public send to's here. And here's one already in here that says copy to Windows desktop. So for this one, what I'm going to do is add a new one that has these same features in. So if I edit this, and then I go down to my add, I can actually modify this and add a new one that's already got the same parameters. Why this is important is, if I just went to go add a new one, I'm going to have to know what this information is in here, because that's something that you're not going to have just off the top of your head, that you're going to know that it's percent uh, WD, uh, code path, all that. That's just a typical what it's running to copy that out. And I don't want it to go back and forth and copy and paste. So if I just come in here and I change this to say copy to World Docs folder, and then all I need to do is change the path of where it's going. So right now, it's saying to save this to the desktop. So I have my dollar sign, desktop, dollar sign. And if I come in and I just add um, a slash, whoops, and I do slash world docs. That's creating a folder. Fix the name. Oops, did I spell it wrong? No, fix the name up above. What did I do up there? You got an extra W. I have an extra. Oh, okay, gotcha. Get your extra okay, gotcha. Paul's talking to me here, and I'm not sure what he's telling me. There we go. I see what you're saying. <laughs> gotcha. All right, there. I can type today. So copy to World Docs folder, and I'm just changing to add to my desktop a slash World Docs. And that's the folder that I'm going to call it. Now, if I do this and I click Add, it's going to go ahead and add a new one that I've created. It still keeps my copy to the desktop intact, but now I've got one in here that says copy to World Docs folder. Whenever I send a document using the send to, 
if I don't already have a World Docs folder on my desktop, it'll create it instantly. Once I've used it and I've taken all those documents and did whatever I wanted to do with those, I can just delete the World Docs folder and the next time I send something to it, it'll recreate that folder again. So I can just keep reusing it anytime I want to this new World Docs folder. I can make it a public, which I did when I created this. I could make it just for me. Whatever you want to do there, you can you can create these um, so that they're global or just for you. So as now long that as that's created, as long as you're a manager, that's true. So now that I've got that created, we're just going to test this. So I'm just going to take this first um, document I have up here, and whoops, I didn't want to really open that document, um, and I'm just going to send it out. Um, let me get back into my World Docs. Sorry. All right, what did we do here, Paul? You got a million things open here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to do my send to and I'm going to use my new one that is copy to World Docs. So let me get that in there right here. And now it's going to copy it. Now it's still retaining the copy in World Docs, so I have not affected any change here. But if I go out to the desktop, We'll just click over here and get into his desktop. There will now be a World Docs folder that it has created. And inside of that World Docs folder is that document that I just moved. Now I can control, um, use my control key. I can highlight whichever ones I want there. I can do a control A on a list. And I can move all those documents out there. You know, copy, I'm sorry, not move. Copy all those documents out to this World Docs folder. And then it will be available that I can do whatever I want with them from there. Now, what, if I get done with those documents, I'm done working with them, I don't need it anymore, I'm just going to delete that whole World Docs folder. It's gone. If I come back into World Docs again and I want to move more documents to a World Docs folder on my desktop, again, I can just pick and choose whatever it is that I want to send out there and then right click and do a send to, pick that again, it will recreate that folder out there. So we'll send these three documents out there, continue. And now it's going to be back out here. So say OK. And it will always tell me whether how many it sent and how many are out here now. So there's my World X folder back again. And if I open it up inside, will be all those documents. So it's just a really fast way that you can use send to's to just go right out to a folder and then do whatever I want from, from here. Um, I could set up a send to that's going to a certain drive. I could set up to a certain folder on my, my documents. It doesn't have to be on my desktop. I can just go in and do that any time. So you might have eight different sun twos that go to eight different folders. You could. You can create as many of these as you want so that you can have it available whenever you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that folder again. What's really neat about this is that, as you said, it... it Are you unmuted? There you go. Oh, OK. Couldn't tell if I could hear him or not. Uh, Mm -hmm. So if you take 150 files from World Docs and send them off to your desktop, good luck. Or if you send them off to my Docs, good luck. You might have a thousand documents, mm -hmm. your documents. And so... Oh, I, I think I ended up muting myself. Uh oh, oh no. <laughs> okay. I was, I was talking, but now I'm not. So what's really cool about this is that if you, if you, as you said, if you send your desktop, it's going out there with all this other garbage. Mm -hmm. If you send them to your My Documents, it's going out there with all your other documents. So if you've got a couple dozen or maybe 150 documents that you want to get out of World Docs to do something with, and you're not putting them in some specific folder like the World Docs folder, you're going to have this mishmash of files. You're going to, have to be able to tell which ones you pulled out of World Docs and which ones were already there. Um, the 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 thing that we find that most people want to do is stuff that has to do with Adobe. Um, you can do some neat stuff from right-clicking on documents in Windows Explorer. You can mark all 150 documents and concatenate and uh, uh, combine and, and do things into one PDF or uh, extrapolate or, 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 or uh, uh, all sorts of different things right from that right-click menu that would take you forever if you had to do them document at a time in World Docs. So if you can get all two dozen files out to a separate folder, highlight them all, um, combine them into one PDF in, in just one right-click action, and you're done. Now, what I'm going to talk about is going the other way. So if we go, for instance, into, oh, somewhere on our C drive here and go into Docs, let's say you have a bunch of documents 
that you need from this folder, and it's got subfolders, and that subfolder may have subfolders like that. But I need this whole RR folder in World Docs. Well, there's a new thing in World Docs, and it is the Save to World Docs from a right click. So if I just go here and highlight a file and right click and choose Save to World Docs, it's going to save that file to World Docs. If I want to send a whole folder and its subfolders, I need to be careful to right click on the folder itself. Going into the folder and marking all of these files and right clicking and choosing Save to World Docs, depending on which maintenance release you have of GX4, may or may not work because they've had some problems with this Save to functionality or Send to functionality. So, what you want to be sure to do is to actually right click on the folder itself that you want to copy into World Docs, including all of its subfolders, and save to World Docs. Now, what I'm going to do after I get done here, after it gets done, is tell it that I want this to go to user files, to P Purdue, to a special folder that I've created called temp, because I don't want to kit this in there and not be able to get it out quickly. And once I've done that, there it goes. All of them, all at once, going into World Docs. Now, let's go take a look at this. Another neat this send to functionality, this save to World Docs functionality is, it then tells you that you just copied these 40 files or 60 files, and it tells you that it's going to create a World Docs link file, or a briefcase they're sometimes called, in the same directory that the files were imported to. So if I now go into World Docs and do a direct access of my user files, one of the things I'm going to find in there is this link file that's going to show me all of the documents and where they were copied from. Okay, So this is the comment that's associated with the document. And in the comment that's associated with each document, we get where this came from. So if you were to sort by that comment, let's say that we add comment as a field over here, as a column, and I'm going to add the comments, and then I'm going to, at that point I can could turn off the comments here, but I'm going to sort by comments, and now I actually get kind of like a link or a hierarchical list of all the files that came in sorted by the folder that they came to. Because after we get video shoot pics, we get to artwork, we get to other things. So sorting by comment is going to get me straight to the folder structure that it came from. So if we go back over here and we see this folder structure, we've got under RR, we've got FC2 and video shoot pics, and under FC2, we have artwork. We're able to see that folder structure in the comments. So we're able to pull everything in. We're able to sort by the comments and kind of see that hierarchical folder structure. And we get this nice briefcase that shows us everything we brought in. So if you've got Discovery and it's on a CD, um, we recommend that you copy the CD contents to somewhere right off your C drive so that you've got a nice clean path and then pull it in that way by highlighting, right-clicking on the folder, and, and saving to World Docs. And so if it's discovery that you're bringing in, maybe it's something that you're bringing in from an old system before you got World Docs, whatever the case may be, this is a quick and, and, and somewhat clean way to do it. Now, there are better ways to bring in legacy documents. There are other ways to bring in things from emails. And we're going to cover that. I'm not sure if it's next month's topic or the month after. I think it's the month after next. We're going to cover the other ways to get stuff from the outside world into World Docs. But this is a nice, quick, and, and relatively clean way to get that stuff in, as long as it fits within the parameters of what you want to do or what you're getting when you're pulling it in. There may be reasons to do it differently to maintain document types or to maintain certain integrity of other fields of information that you want to store.
So that's it. That's all we have for today. Next month we're going to talk about versioning. It constantly amazes us how many people don't know that there's versioning built into World Docs. Uh, it's one of its most powerful features, the ability to save as version 2, version 3, version 4, to even see which version you're looking at when you look at the document stamp, all of that. So we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about document level security, which is a way to, on a document by document basis, say, hey, this is hidden, or this should be read only, or this should be only accessible by these people with these rights. So those are our topics for next month. It warrants uh, mentioning that if you go to attorney computer systems with an em emphasis on that last S in systems right there, if you go to attorneycomputersystems.com, there is a video tab. And underneath it, you will find the four live events that we do on a monthly basis. We have three virtual user group meetings plus our coffee pot webinars. So we've got our tabs three, Practice Master, and World Docs virtual user group meetings. Uh, that's what you're at right now, and our coffee pot webinars. If you click on one of these live events, then you'll be taken to a page that describes that event, will take you to registration information for the next live event. This will change sometime in the next hour with links that can be clicked on to register. And then as you scroll down, you will find recorded versions of everything else, unless it happens to be in post-production, because this one that we're recording right now will be in post-production for a couple of weeks before it shows up on the website. So as you scroll down, if you go to the very bottom, you'll see that you can kind of just browse through these uh, recorded webinars. Uh, by clicking on the different pages or advancing to the next page. And you'll see that we have eight pages of World Docs bugs. So we have quite a bit of content. There's several years that we've been doing this and recording them and putting them on our, our website. Or if you go up to the top and simply click on search and type, oh, some word like email, and then either pick one of the results that comes up at the top or click on view all results or the magnifying glass to get the more elongated list. Uh, this is a good way to zero in on specific information that you need uh, directly, like how to email statements and tabs or, or how to search using Boolean logic in, in World Docs. So these are there for you all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We put a lot of effort into putting these together for you, and we know we have a lot of clients that use this uh, on a daily or weekly basis. So if you're not one of those clients, by all means, go take a look at this and see what's out there. And so we will see you next month. Have a good rest of the day and rest of the month, and we'll see you in June. Thanks much, everybody. Bye-bye.